Nagging stomach and abdominal pain could be something much more serious. Diverticulitis often forms in your intestines lining. So even though you might not have heard of it, it's actually pretty common, especially if you're 40 years old or older. Now, some studies have found nearly half of Americans between 60 and 80 years old have it. So joining me now is Dr. Alex Crean, a colorectal surgeon with HCA Florida Memorial Hospital. And uh, good morning. Thank you for being here. Morning. Thank you so much for having me. So first, uh, what exactly is is uh, this disease. Can you break that down for us? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, the colon or large intestine is typically like a smooth tube that um, you know we have our bowel function through. Diverticulosis or diverticular disease is when we form these small little pockets or outpouchings on that. A lot of people have them. As you just mentioned, it becomes more and more common as you age. But when you get diverticulitis, it's when one of these pockets becomes infected or inflamed. Okay, so what factors makes it likely for someone to develop something like yeah, this? Yeah, great question. You know, so we, we, th we know a lot about it, but we don't know the full mechanism of why it forms. There's definitely some risk factors that can include smoking, uh, obesity, diets that are high in processed foods or red meat, um, and then diets that are low in fiber. So these things can all contribute, and there's also a genetic component as well. So this can run in families. Okay, and what about foods? Are there any foods that can, you know, trigger the attack at all? So, you know, there was a thinking, a lot of people know with diverticulitis that we thought things like seeds or nuts, popcorn, that the thought was that those little kernels might get stuck in one of the pockets and become infected. Um, we don't think that's as true as before. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of times, it's just a combination of bad luck and then some of the risk factors that we mentioned before uh, that trigger these attacks. Okay, and we know some of the common signs is just a simple stomach ache. How can someone tell the difference of a normal stomach ache and then this disease? Yeah, no, great question. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of times people have a stomach bug, stomach ache, it goes away on its own. When someone's having severe or worsening pain in the same spot, frequently closer to the left hip on the left side of your stomach. Um, and then if you're having associated fevers, you're not able to keep any food or water down. Um, these are really things you do want to consider, especially if it's going on over the course of a day or two and not getting better. Okay, so when do you decide, all right, it's time I need to see a doctor? Yeah, absolutely. So, it, you know, if, if you're starting to have higher fevers, if the pain is actually kind of getting worse over every day, um, if you're um, not able to keep anything down, um, especially if you're feeling very bloated, because that can be a sign of like a brewing infection that may need, you know, evaluation in a hospital or at least by your primary care physician. Okay, and what are some of the most common uh, treatment options for this? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of times diverticulitis can be managed as an outpatient. So sometimes we just have people back off to a liquid diet. We'll give them some antibiotics to calm down the inflammation. That's the more mild cases. You know, it can progress to something uh, more serious where there's actually can develop uh, an abscess, like a collection of uh, infected fluid, or even a perforation, a hole in the colon. Um, so these are things when people want to be seen in the emergency room to make sure you don't need intravenous antibiotics, and very rarely some type of emergency surgery. Okay, so really quickly, um, is there any way at all to prevent it? I know you said some of it, it can be linked to genetics. Yeah, so again, it's, it really is tied into a healthy lifestyle. So if you can maintain a high fiber, low fat diet, you know, try to reduce your intake of red meat. And if you are a smoker, you know, cut back or try to stop smoking. These are all things that can help um, decrease the rate of infection or problems going forward. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Crean. It was a pleasure having you here this morning. I think these tips will help a lot of families out there who really need this. Great. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.